What's good, Dragon Ball Super fans out there? It's your boy Rebel here, back again with another video for you guys. I got a decent little what if for you guys. I don't know if this has been made yet, but today we're going to be talking about what if Moro is a Mikayo Shin. But before we get into that, let's talk about this. About 90% of you guys that watch my videos aren't even subscribed to the channel. And I have a goal of reaching a thousand subscribers. So if you guys want to help out with that, hit that red subscribe button and let's get right into it. So, like I said before, I don't know if this has been discussed already yet, but what if Moro is a Mikayo Shin? Now, there's been a lot of theories of what if Moro was a god of destruction that seemingly has been debunked, but since we still don't know his origin and what about Moro is just more makes him Moro, makes him so strong, right? I had thought of this theory of what if Moro was a Mikayo Shin from the demon realm, or demon realm, right? Now he's been around for a long time. He's very strong. They wasn't able to defeat him at first, so they had to seal him away. So what if Moro is a Mikayo Shin? And he's been around for so long that he's been able to like like you know, he went from the demon realm to, you know, our realm basically and just stayed here. And he was just trying to destroy things, and that's when he came into contact with our Kaioshin, you know, the Dai Kaioshin, and they sealed him away. But the reason why I'm making Moro a Mikayo Shin will be great for the story is the simple fact that it actually expands the lore even more. We know about the demon demon uh, realm from, you know, Deborah, and that has never been expounded on and never been talked about ever since then. But now what if they got that opportunity to not only do it with Moro, but also you know expand on the Makayo Shin which has been talked about when they you know introduce the Kayo Shin you know Shin so we get to actually expand on the lore of Dragon Ball Super as a whole which Dragon Ball Super hasn't done pretty good on you know expanding the lore well it actually has done really good by you know introducing the gods uh, you know the god of destructions and the angels and more of the you know uh, the Kaioshins, but we still don't know nothing about the Makaioshin. How strong are they, right? And that's what Moro can, you know, expound expound on that, all right? Can make that such a just not a something that you just brought up one time and then just forgot about it. But this is the opportunity to actually expand the story even more because after Moro, what's the next arc going to be? Who is the next villain going to be possibly right because at this point in time we at the point where these villains have to be, these vill there's no villains on earth that's strong enough to beat to beat goku and vegeta after this arc is over it will be hard to just pull out anybody unless the next arc is where they go into you know universe six you know and you know talk about the universe six saiyans that's the only arc that could go after this but then what's after that if they bring that up nothing else we don't know what can possibly happen with dragon ball super so ex doing this expands the lore even more brings out the demon realm and brings out even more enemies besides moro that can be stronger than moro you know what dragon ball heroes had for it was the demon realm bringing out you know uh mechikabura the uh not the bora um i forgot his demigra that expanded Dragon Ball Heroes lore even more and Dragon Ball Super will need to go down that same realm if they want to continue Dragon Ball Super because like I said the villains that you could just bring out and especially on Universe 7 on Earth not on Earth but just on Universe 7 cannot be any stronger than Goku and Vegeta anymore because we literally went through the whole universe we fought the strongest what are you going to do bring back bring back Cell and do like a, you know you know do like a Frieza type thing or where we're gonna have Frieza become another villain which is potentially gonna happen down the line Frieza's still alive so he's gonna become another villain so that's gonna be the third time he becomes you know we have a Frieza arc right but like I said expanding the lore of the uh, Mikayo Shins bringing new characters bringing more toys bringing more money for Dragon Ball Super and that's what they've been looking to do 
with basically the toys, you know, the transformations, uh, Goku, Vegeta, giving them these little transformations. Even Dragon Ball Heroes is doing basically the same with their, I don't know, their game. I think you got to buy the card for their game. Basically, you got Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan God Trunks, things like that. That expands the lore for that universe, for that storyline. And Dragon Ball Super will get to, it's getting to the point, I think it's at the point already. Because, like I said, after this arc, what's next? Are we going to finally go to Universe 6 and explore the, you know, the Saiyans there? You know, have finally the Vegeta meet the Saiyan King of Universe 6? That could be a good arc, right? But what is that? I don't know if that's a full-blown arc because we already seen that our... There shouldn't even be any fighting, infighting within that. That could be just a mini arc that leads on to a bigger arc from there, right? So, like I like I said, after Universe 6, which could be a mini arc or a full arc, whatever you guys want to put it as, introducing new characters, introducing the Universe 6 Saiyan King, you know, finally, finally, like, doing what they're what they said they were going to do in the story before in the story before now after that what's next that is the big question for dragon ball super even if even if they're not going to do the universe 6 arc and they just and they're just planning on doing a new arc after morrow what is next are we going to get to a point where grand priest is involved at some point in time we don't know so instead of just like you know Instead of just trying to pull something out their ass, they could literally expand on the lore that they had introduced already in Dragon Ball Z with the Demon Realm and a Mikayo Shin. Moro with the M on his belt could stand for Mikayo Shin. Some people thought it could have stood for, you know, the Majin, Majin, but he's not a Majin. That was debunked, right? Or it could still be, but I don't know. But it could stand for a Mikhail Shin. That expands the lore even more. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section about this. Because my big question for all of Dragon Ball Super after Moro's arc is over, it's what's next? Now if they, you know, if they show that Moro is a Mikhail Shin from the Demon Realm and escape Mikhail Shin at that or something, you know, give us a good storyline to why Moro the Mikayo Shin is not where he should be in the demon realm and how he came to be on universe 7 that would be pretty good because I'm I'm we still haven't gotten the origins of Moro we just know he's been around for a long time he fought the, the Kyo, Dai Kyo Shin and got sealed away and now he was loose then there's theories about where the Grand Priest let him loose and you know let him loose to test out uh, Miris and test out Whis things like that but I'd rather him just be a Mikhail Shin and we get something new from that, the demon realm, where we can go and explore or something, fight some new villains. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about if more was a Mikhail Shin? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you haven't subscribed already yet, please do so. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. So if you guys want to help out with that, hit that red subscribe button. And I'll check you guys later. Peace, YouTube.